perfect all right perfect what's up everybody tighten up tighten up yes sir what's up everybody okay man um at first you guys i wanted to kind of go over uh what brian callahan said in sunday's presser kind of he went over everything and i wanted to kind of go over it with you guys uh brian callahan talked after the 17 to 13 preseason win against the 49ers uh you know next up is a pair of joint practices versus the seahawks and a preseason game against the seahawks next saturday at nissan stadium um let's see uh callahan said the team expects to get jamal adams back at practice this week and safety quandre Diggs back into a full workload after signing with the team last week quandre Diggs is gonna be big you guys and jamal adams and they've worked together before just just pay attention and, and enjoy tennessee titans football trust me um let's see um Linebacker Luke Gifford will miss time after suffering a concussion on opening kickoff uh, last uh, last game against the 49ers. Let's hope he's okay. You don't want to get that. You don't you don't want to get the ball rolling on the injury. But we've had the worst injury history in the last two years. We got to make sure it's better this year. So hopefully Luke's okay. Uh, the Titans are scheduled to practice against the Seahawks on Wednesday and Thursday of this week. Callahan said uh, because the starters are expected. To get two days of physical work against the Seahawks, many of them might not even play in preseason uh, game number two. I'll officially give you more playtime information at the end of the week, Callahan said, but the starting point for the starters will, will be to play a little less, if at all, depending on how the two practices go against the Seattle Seahawks, uh, since it's, it will be such a heavy workload on those guys. The emphasis will be for the ones to get out a lot of reps in the joint practices and the twos and threes to play a lot more in the games. I like that. I don't want my, I don't want the starters to get hurt, man. We need as many guys as possible for that week one game against the bears. Uh, Callahan said his expectations is defensive lineman, Jeffrey Simmons, edge, Harold Landry and cornerback Legereus Sneed might not play in uh, the preseason at all. You don't need them for what, for what? I don't need to see a lot of Jeff and Harold. Those guys kind of have proven it, Callahan said. And Legereus won't play in preseason. I don't see that being the case. Uh, uh, let's see. He said maybe maybe uh, we decide by last week that Harold and Jeff go out for a couple of plays just to knock the pads around. I don't want to see that personally. But as of right now, I don't think those guys will, pl will play. Don't, why? Why play them? Don't play them. You don't need them to. You don't need them to. Uh, let's see. Callahan singled out veteran... Uh, Offensive lineman Daniel Brunskill and third-year player Andrew Rupkick, Rupchick, when asked about the offensive lineman behind the first group on Saturday, it was a good game uh, for him. Callahan said of Rupkick a positive performance. Callahan said it was a good uh, good start for the first team offensive line while also giving backup uh, backup Jalen Duncan a shout out for doing some good things. Uh, Jalen Duncan's a f okay backup, but you don't want him being the guy. It just doesn't work. All right, this is where it gets interesting. Brian Callahan, uh, Tennessee Titans head coach, says uh, running back Hassan Haskins performed well on special teams while Julius Chestnut had a better day carrying the football and in the passing game. I hope Julius Chestnut's the backup. He's earned it, in my opinion. I would like to know what you guys think in the comments section about that. Uh, Callahan said those players are battling for a spot behind running backs Tony Pollard and Ty J. Shakespeare, the barber. Uh, it will acknowledge keeping four backs on the 53-man roster would be a luxury. Callahan said... Felt good calling the plays for the first time Saturday night, and he thought the process went smooth. If I felt a lot better now I, than I did 24, 24 hours ago, Callahan said. And he's going to get better and better. He's going to feel more and more confident. It's going to get better. Trust me. Trust me. Work out a few things here and there, and then when you go into week one against the Bears, just boom, launch the attack, the Tennessee Titan attack, baby. Callahan said rookies Tavondre Sweat and Jalen Harrell both dealt with first game nerves, uh, and he expects them both to settle in and improve next game. Yeah, Tavondre Sweat was really nervous. I heard I heard them say that. Callahan said linebacker Chance Campbell had a great outing by playing loose and fast and aggressive. Uh, Callahan said he thought Otis Reese, the fourth, also played well, and they made the most of their opportunities. Callahan said rookie James Williams uh, has flashed as well during practices. James Williams is a... Uh, uh, for a rookie that, that we drafted he's a former safety for the Miami Hurricanes and we drafted him he's playing linebacker for us so he's very green he doesn't have a lot of experience uh, at the linebacker position but he's six foot four and he can tackle he hits so hard he's gonna fit in perfectly to what we're doing I can't wait to see uh, you know how he works into it and again he's learning a new position so um, you know, just work with him, let him, let him learn what he's got to learn. And then hell, maybe he, he, he hits the field sooner rather than later, but, uh, his tackling ability is very nice. So I'm very happy to see, uh, you know, his capabilities and what he can do. 
Um, the Titans went for it on fourth down twice in Saturday's game, once on fourth and one at the San Francisco two in the first half, and the other time on fourth and one at the San Francisco 49 in the fourth quarter. Uh, Callahan said the team will maintain our aggressiveness when our analytics tell us it's the right time to go. Callahan said decisions moving forward will depend on our variables such as field position, time of game, uh, the, the opponent's defense, etc. We'll be aggressive on fourth down, Callahan said, as long as it's in the parameters of how we have the game set up. And it varies from game to game. That's true, too. Every game's different. We won't be afraid to go for it. And I, I like that, man, because, again, man, I, we've, had, we, we've gotten so used to so many Titans teams that are all right, just play defense, hold the team under 20, and you try to kick as many field goals to win. Like, that's ridiculous, bro. We've got an offense that can score as many points as we need them to score. I can't wait. You guys, seriously, I'm so excited for this football season. Can't wait. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, that's going to – trust me. I, I, I think so. Chat section. Put it in the chat section. How do you guys feel about the Titans being more aggressive on fourth down? I think, I think we're going to need to be. Uh, obviously, I trust Nick Folk. Uh, obviously, I trust uh, Ryan Stonehouse, but we got to be able to score points. You can't just trust your punter and defense and your field. No, you got to score. Let's go and win games because of offense now. How about that? How about that? Uh, Callahan noted the importance of Rob Radier, uh, assistant director of football strategy for the Titans on game days and during the week. Callahan and Radier will lead the team's game management and will help the team make decisions on clock management, replays, timeouts, when to challenge, etc. Man, it seems like Vrabel didn't know nothing about those in-game situations. <laughs> oh, man, I love this. Uh, he's the one I hear most of the game in my headset, Callahan said of Ritter here. Uh, he's the one I hear all the time, and he is like the rules expert on top of it, so he knows everything. He's going to let Callahan know, hey, man, you might not be able to do that. <laughs> I love it, man. I'm excited for this team. Callahan said Scott Cohen, hired in analytics by the team, will also be involved in the process. Scott and Rob on game days are working in tandems together with the management part of the team, Callahan said. And that's uh, everything from timeouts, clock management, replay, any situational calls that I need to be aware of. They are always monitoring that part of the game while I am doing the offense and defense and special teams. Those guys have been fantastic. They're super, super smart, and we're lucky to have them. That's interesting, and I like that, bro. Let's get it going, man. We got an analytics team. We got it all, bro. We're ready to go. In-game situation, um, clock management, replay, all that stuff is being handled by those guys. I can't wait to see how that works out. But uh, that way, Callahan can focus on, on offense, defense, special teams, and whatnot. And those guys can kind of give them a help upstairs. I like that. I really do like that a lot. I think that's going to be really big for the Titans going forward. Uh, let me know in the comment section how you guys are feeling about all that. Uh, again, man, I'm, I'm happy about having Brian Callahan, man. I think he's going to be a special coach. I really do. Let's see. Here's some things that stood out. The one-two punch in the running game. Man, Ty J. Shakespeare, the barber, you guys. Ty J. Spears and, um, you know, freshly newly cowboy, former cowboy, Tony Pollard. Fresh, He's fresh, healthy, ready to go, excited. He had that 20, what, 26-yard run, ready to go. Um it's going to be fun, man. Uh, the Titans look different without Derrick Henry in the backfield. We all know that. On Saturday night, the team took the field without their workhorse of the past seasons as the page officially turned. I thought the tandem of Tony Pollard and Ty J. Spears looked great against the 49ers. However, uh, the Titans hope it's a sign of things to come. Pollard carried the ball four times for 35 yards, 8.8 yards per carry in the contest, and Spears scored on a nifty four-yard touchdown run in the second quarter as he bounced to the outside, as I call it, the berry bounce, and and found the the end zone. He's been great. Uh, bo he's been a great brother to work with. Spears said of Pollard, "We're still working. We still have a lot of things to clean up, but we're off to a great start." You guys got to understand something. This this one-two punch is going to be really, really good. Cowboys thought Pollard was going to be the guy. You know, he got banged up, and he's not really the – he's not a bell cow guy in my opinion, but he is a guy that can do a lot of work. I'm very excited for what he's going to bring. Again, he already ripped off a 26-yard run, looked very explosive, and the thing is very – he looks very strong, and the vision is there. His experience is there. Ty J. Spears gets to learn with from Derrick Henry his first season, and then his second season, which is coming up now, Tony Pollard gets to be his brother, his partner in crime, his teammate, his 
his buddy. You know what I'm saying? This is going to be an amazing. This is going to be the best one-two punch in all of the NFL, no doubt in my mind. And it's going to open up the pass game. We're going to be so damn unpredictable. I cannot wait to see what we do and how it all works out. I told everybody, I think Ty J Spears has all the capabilities and talent to become a superstar in this league. He reminds me of Ricky Williams and LaDainian Tomlinson thrown together in a lab. And in doop, 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 out came Ty J Spears. You guys think you can say what you want about it. Just pay attention to this year. Just watch and pay attention. The guy bounces like Barry Sanders. The guy has the explosion like LaDainian Tomlinson. He has a stiff arm like LT and Derrick Henry. He's got vision like a Ricky Williams and the dreads like Ricky Williams. I'm telling you, pay attention. Number two, number two for the Tennessee Titans. You guys may not like him, may not, may not even know who he is, but you will see a lot of explosive plays, and he's unstoppable in the open field, unstoppable. Un you can't catch him in the open field. Are you kidding me? Man, oh man. So I'm excited about that combination. You know, Titans losing Derrick Henry to the to the Purple Pigeons. I get that. Um, but Ty J Spears is more than capable. Uh, and so is Tony Pollard. Together they're gonna do work. And and I expect it to I expect it to be very good. It's gonna i I mean, think about that. You're gonna have two running backs now that uh, Will Levis, when he's in there, when, when Brian Callahan's calling plays, you don't have to change plays depending on which running back's in the game. Every time Derrick Henry was in the game, they only used him in in uh, you know the bunched formations for the most part. They didn't use him in, in the shotgun sets that much. They didn't have him spread out with three, four, five receivers out there and trust him in the RPO. They, I don't know why they didn't, but now we got two guys that, I mean, I mean, clearly, Tony Pollard is a great reception guy, and so is Ty J. Spears. So, again, this one-two punch is not Hawaiian punch. This is two-tone punch. I cannot wait for you guys to see this Titans uh, one-two punch running game. This is going to be a very, very vicious attack. And, again, both both of these running backs are, are three-down backs. Both of these running backs can catch the ball behind and in front of the line of scrimmage and run all the routes. And both these running backs can run inside and outside of the tackles, inside and outside of all the holes. The, the, the difference is one's a little stronger, one's a little quicker, one's a little faster, one's a little whatever. Like, you got to understand it. They're very similar, but very, very different. And that's what I love. And we don't have to change the offensive playbook at all. Scheme stays the same, and the winds are going to start piling up like pancakes. I cannot wait, bro. Blue pancakes for everybody, baby. Blue can pancakes for everybody. Make sure you guys all hit that like button, comment, subscribe. Let's get it. Yeah. What's up, fellas? What's up? I'm Titan Anderson. You cannot spell Titans without putting that T-A in it. All right, you guys. All right, you guys. Let's talk about number eight. Willie Rocket. Will Levis has, uh, you know, a pretty decent debut. A big hit we're going to talk about. And he needs to avoid that. Uh, Titans quarterback Will Levis had a chance to show off his progress in the preseason opener, and he played long enough to make a few plays. Levis completed four or five passes for 35 yards, including a 22-yard toss to receiver Calvin Roadrunner Ridley. Levis uh, also managed to find the end zone uh, before the scoring run quarterback sneak. Levis took a big hit from 49ers linebacker D. Winters on another run as he attempted to score, which I do not like that. Get down. Don't worry about it. It's preseason. Don't take no hits. So, again, it'll, he'll, he'll clean that up. He'll clean it up. But, again, it's preseason. He wants to get in the end zone. He's excited to be back at you know with his guys, his teammates, his brothers. And, and um, I get it. You want to score, but you got to be safe. Best, of, uh, best ability is availability. And we ain't going to win games if you ain't out there, bro. So, again, uh, you got to stay healthy and avoid those big hits. Um, Levis needs to pick his battles as a runner because the last thing the Titans want to see is Levis injured in preseason. That'd be, oh my God, Titans fans would, would be devastated. He got some free advice from the others after taking the hit. I got some people telling me it's preseason. Get down, Levis said. I was trying to make something happen, but I have to be smarter. And he knows that. He knows that. He's just a, he's a natural playmaker. It's what he is. It's what he does. When the Titans came back against the Miami, uh, Dolphins, the tuna fish, and we beat, uh, Tua, um, you see that fire? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that, you can't teach that. He's a natural leader, and he's going to uh, he's going to take us to where we need to go. The AFC South is loaded, bro. It is, and 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 we got our guy to help lead us and try to 
you know, fight back against those tomato can tap dancing Texans. So I'm excited for it. Um, but Levis has got, he's gonna, he's gonna have to get down. Don't worry about running people over. It doesn't work like that. Get out of bounds or slide. You have two running backs that are hungry and lots of weapons on the outside. And even Tyler Boyd, Chig, Josh Wiley, everyone's ready to go to help you score. Don't get hurt. We need you. <laughs> Oh, man, I'm so excited about Will Levis. I need everybody in the chat section. How do you guys feel about Willie Rocket, Will Levis? Do you guys expect Will Levis to take the next step for the Tennessee Titans as starting quarterback? I can't wait, man. He's got receivers everywhere. The tight ends are ready to go. Running backs are just, you know, licking their chops, just ready to play football. Defense is excited. You know, the coaching's ready. I'm excited. This is going to be a good football team. All right, you guys, let's talk about Calvin Roadrunner Ridley and that explosiveness. Man, I don't know if the Titans have ever had a guy that explosive ever. Calvin Ridley, you guys, he didn't play much in preseason, but um, he was out there long enough to show why the Titans picked him up in free agency. Calvin Ridley caught a short pass across the middle, um, and he escaped pursuit to race 22 yards off to the right, putting his speed on display. Ridley has dazzled in training camp practices, showing elite speed, unable to be guarded. And the Titans fans got a sneak peek of what's to come on Saturday night. Uh, we were trying to get the ball to Calvin two or three times there. Coach Brian Callahan said it was good to just get Calvin going. And you see how explosive he can be with the ball in his hands. And again, he mentioned before, Brian Callahan has mentioned before, he 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 he, brought, he wants um, he wants to use the roadrunner a lot like he used um, Jamar Chase with the Bengals. Obviously, they're they're different, but they're both playmakers. They're both very quick, both you know very good route runners and, and just playmakers at the receiver position. We're going to use Ridley everywhere: go routes, slant routes, flat uh, screens, uh, it, uh, wheel, it, hook. It, but it, it, all of them, post. It doesn't matter. You name the route, he he can run him. He's one of the best route runners in football. Um, you got DeAndre Hopkins that's going to be on the other side. He will be ready week one. Don't let nobody fool you. DeAndre Hopkins will start opposite Calvin Roadrunner Ridley week one against the Bears. You have Tyler, Tyler Boyd on the inside, bro. You still have Chiggy, Chiggy, Chiggy. Can't you see? You're going to be catching some Titans touchdowns in front of me. You got Chiggy, Chig Conquo, and, and Josh Wiley holding down the tight end position. Brand new offensive line that's going to allow these receivers to go down the field and make plays. Uh, you know, D-Hop mentioned last year the receivers had to cut routes short because the offensive line wasn't holding up. Now the receivers are not even not just going to be able to run their routes, but they're going to be able to do everything they want and more. J.C. Latham and Peter Skaronsky have changed the game. We have rebuilt the offensive line. Lloyd Cushenberry brought over from the Broncos, and he's only going to get better. He's working with... He's working against Tavon, Tavondre Sweat and Jeffrey Simmons every single day in practice. So every time he plays somebody else, it's going to be like, okay, that's easy. Hey, thank you, Blues Powerhouse, for the for the gift, bro. I appreciate you. Thank you, bro. You guys got to understand, Calvin really is going to change the game for us. He really is. We brought him in for a reason, and he's going to be a top five weapon this year in the NFL. Receiving yards, he'll be top five. Top five receiving yards for number for number zero, the Roadrunner. Two-tone Roadrunner, Calvin Ridley. All right, bro. Let's go, man. Let's go. Let's talk about the return game. The new kickoff is going to take some getting used to. In week one of the preseason, fans saw the play unfold in front of their own eyes. Titans fans probably liked what they saw in the return game as Kiaris Jackson returned uh, the the Titans' first kickoff return, 63 yards, setting up the team's first score of the night. It wasn't the only successful return of the night uh, for, but it, but guess guess what? It happened again. Rookie Jaquan Jackson uh, returned a punt, 26 yards, which gave the team good field position once again. It was exciting. Jaquan Jackson said, "We feed off the plays like that, and it fires guys up." Got to understand something, man. The return game is huge. We've had so many issues with it. Thank you for all the donation, Blues Power. Thank you, man. All the donations. Appreciate you, bro. Um, on the uh, on the official depth chart, unofficial depth chart, whatever. Um, you really need you really need uh, to understand that it's crazy. Nobody, I guarantee you, nobody. No Titans YouTuber. No no media guy. No analytics guy. No no NFL person. Nobody had Ty J Spears as starting kickoff return. Did any of you? Did any of you think he'd be starting kickoff returner? I sure as hell didn't. But the more I think about how impossible he is to catch in the open field, 
Oh my god, he's like that remote control cart from Toy Story. You ain't catching him, man. You ain't catching him, bro. I'm telling you, and I'm so excited about the opportunities. The new return rule. I don't want him to get injured. Uh, and if Kiaris Jackson continues to dominate, maybe you just leave him out there. But Ty J. Shakespeare, the barber, is going to be really, really good, you guys. He really is. And you want your playmakers to have opportunities. If this, if this kickoff rule you know, benefits the Titans, you know, leave him out there, leave him out there. Uh, but, but right now, Kiaris Jackson is doing well. He had like two or three spin moves on that return and he looked great. Uh, Jaquan Jackson has such quick feet, maybe the quickest feet on the team. I don't know. Um, but he's somebody that could be just like Khalif Raymond, maybe even faster. I don't know. Um, but he's somebody that's going to be fighting for a spot as well. Um, they have Mason Kinsey, a starting punt returner as of right now. And they have Ty J. Shakespeare, the barber, as starting kickoff returner. If if Spears is not the kickoff returner, Kiaris Jackson, I'm fine with it. Um, but one of those two, I, I think it should just stay with those two right now. And then the punt returner, I would like it for it to be Jaquan Jackson and then Mason Kinsey as the backup. Um, that, that's how I'm looking at it right now. I want to know everybody's thought process right now. How do you guys want the return, uh, the return game to be handled for the Tennessee Titans? How, which guys would you guys like to be out there? returning the ball for the Tennessee Titans week one versus the Chicago Bears in Chicago, mind you. All right, man. Defense, 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 defense. Yes, it was a shaky start. The 49ers took the opening kickoff and drove 74 yards on 11 plays to take a 7-0 lead to start the contest. After that, however... The little gold diggers didn't score again until midway through the fourth quarter. While the 49ers starters weren't out there, the Titans were uh, were without a good deal of their front liners as well. Jeffrey Simmons, Harold Landry, Lejerry Sneed, Shadobia Woozy, and Quandre Diggs. Don't forget about Jamal Adams. Were among those who didn't suit up on a night uh, when Chance Campbell led the team with eight tackles and Campbell and Keandre Coburn recorded sacks. The Titans held the 49ers to 4 of 11 on third down, 36.4%, and 0 for 2 on fourth down. Pretty impressive stuff. Uh, and going to the Chance Campbell real quick on that big night that he had, he's a tackling machine, he's an effort magnet monster. I mentioned Campbell in the previous graph. Uh, it was a heck of a performance for the third down linebacker or third year linebacker who had eight tackles and a sack and a game ceiling interception on the final play of the game. I think anytime you can help the team, Ch uh, Campbell said it feels good. Coach Ca uh, Callahan bragged on Campbell afterward. He made plays kind of all night long, Callahan instead of Campbell. He made some hits on the quarterback. I think he sacked the quarterback once, if I'm not mistaken. But just to see him come alive uh, a little bit w uh, was great because we're looking for guys to keep coming in the room uh, for depth purposes. Obviously, we lost Garrett Wallow, uh, and so the opportunity is there, and he did a nice job taking advantage of it. That's facts, bro, man. When your number's called, step up and get it done. You know what I mean? Step up and get it done. This defense, I'm telling you, man, Tavondre Sweat out there getting double teamed on a third of his plays with no Jeffrey Simmons. Jeffrey Simmons is double teamed on every play. So how do you double and triple team both of them at the same time when they're out there together? Harold Landry looking unstoppable. Towards the end of last season, don't be surprised. It, I mean, he's going to hit 10 sacks easy. But um, he'll be between 10 and 15 sacks. You're going to see it. It's going to happen. Tavondre Sweat. Everyone wants to talk about defensive rookie of the year. Do not sleep on him from getting defensive rookie of the year. And I say this for a reason. He's got Harold Landry and he's got Jeffrey Simmons on the... Are you kidding me? He gets to play next to them as a rookie? And he's got Legereus Sneed and Shadobia Wouzier and Quandre Diggs and Amani Hooker and Jamal Adams and Kenneth Murray Jr. and all these guys back there to help him? Oh my God. Sleeper defensive player of the year will be big boy Tavondre Sweat. I promise you, bookmark it. Tighten up. You're going to see it. The big boy is going to eat this year. Oh, buddy. The Blue Shrek's ready to go, man. Tavondre, sweat. Don't sleep on him. That's my that's my pick. Don't sleep on him. Don't sleep on him. Even if he didn't have those guys next to him, he still probably would be involved. But because he has those guys next to him, he's going to be involved. He may reach 10 sacks. And if he reaches 10 sacks as a rookie... Oh, D -poy, D D D defensive rookie of the heat year is going to be his. Keep sleeping on him. Keep sleeping on him. If you don't know who he is, everyone said, Oh my God, the Titans took Devondre Sweat in the second round. Ha, reaching. He's a third rounder. Late second, early mid third. <coughs> wow. He's dominating and everyone's noticing it. 
He didn't play with Jeffrey Simmons in college, did he? <laughs> this defense is ready to go. Let's go, man. Tighten up. Hit that Hit that uh, chat section right now. Let me know what you guys think about this defense going forward into this year. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Before we continue, we also have uh, Cash App, Money Sign, Titan Anderson. Send something, send a message, and we'll read it off in the live stream. I love it, bro. Killing it right now. I love it. I love it. Titans look good, bro. The Tennessee Titans look amazing out there. Oh, my God. Let's talk. Let's talk. Let's, I want to go to the... Uh, I want to go to the uh, the update the updated depth chart real quick and talk about that for you guys. Let me get it up real quick. Let me find it. Let me find it. Where are you at, buddy? Where are you at? There it is. All right, y'all. What's up, fellas? Make sure you guys hit that follow button. All right, here's the unofficial depth chart after we picked up um, Quandre Diggs, right? And everybody assumed Quandre Diggs would start right away. He's a four. I mean, he hasn't missed a game in four years. He's a He's a three. He made the Pro Bowl three times in a row. What, what was it from twenty 2020 twenty to twenty twenty three? I believe something like that. Somebody somebody could put it in the chat if they know for a fact. Um, but he he he's made many Pro Bowls. Uh, he's thirty one, so he's in his prime right now, and 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 um, that's perfect. Again, best of best abilities availability, and um, he's going to go out and start. That way, we can use uh, Jamal Adams situationally, rotationally, and uh, keep him fresh and healthy, 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 healthy. All right, here's the unofficial depth chart for the Tennessee Titans. Here we go. Um, wide receiver Calvin Ridley will start on the outside with NWI, Kiaris Jackson behind him. Tight ends, you've got Chig Conquil and Josh Wiley both starting. Uh, Nick Vanette and Thomas Adoko, uh, Adukoya, I'm just going oh, to uh, as the backups. Left tackles, J.C. Latham. Left guard, Peter Skoronsky. Center, Lloyd Cushenberry. Right guard, Dylan Radons. Right tackle, NPF, Nicholas Petit Freer. And again, locked in. That needs to stay. That needs to stay. Don't 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 mess around with that. Start them. Keep them together. They've earned that. Keep that unit together. I like it. DeAndre Hopkins starts opposite Calvin Ridley on the outside. Traylon Burks will be DeAndre Hopkins' backup. Will Levis is our starter with Mason Rudolph. Uh, the backup, and Malik Willis, the third stringer. Those two are going to continue to battle it out. Um, the running backs are listed both. Not 1A, 1B, but both starters, Tony Pollard and Ty J. Spears. Hassan Haskins is listed as the backup with Julius Chestnut and Jabari Small as the, the, the third and four. Uh, defense, you got your starting defensive end, Sebastian Joseph Day. Starting nose tackles, Tavondre Sweat. My, my defensive rookie of the year. Um, defensive tackles, Jeffrey Simmons. Uh, outside linebacker, you've got Arden Key. Inside linebacker, Kenneth Murray Jr. and Jack Gibby. Chance Campbell is Gibby's backup. Chance Campbell, I, I'm telling you, I like him more than Gibby. I would love to know what you guys think about that. I really, really like Chance Campbell more than Jack Gibby. Um, put in the comment section what you guys think about that. Um, and then you got uh, Cedric Gray, Gray and James Williams as well behind them. Again, James Gray, James Williams is going to continue to learn. Let him learn. He's six foot four. As a, he was a safety from Miami rookie, and he switched over to linebacker. Let him learn. I'm okay with him staying on the team. Just learn. Cedric Gray, man, he's ready. He, I like him. I like that draft pick. But again, I just Chance Campbell's making plays, bro. And if he continues to make plays. Gibby, you better continue to make plays, bro, because Chance Campbell's there. Put in the comment section what you guys think about that right there. Uh, let's go. Uh, uh, outside linebacker opposite Her Arden Key is Harold Landry the third, and his backup, Shane Ray. I love it. Shane Ray looks explosive, honestly. Shadobi Awuze starts at corner. His backup, Trey Avery. Uh, outside corner opposite Shadobi Awuze is Legereus Sneed, and his backup is Jarvis Brown Lee Jr. Wow, this rookie looks so damn good. He is in your face. He plays so much like Chidobia Wuzie, and he plays so much like Legereus Sneed. He's going to get so, so good. He's going to be very good for this team going into this year, and he's going to help out a lot. You're going to see a lot of him this year. Trust me. Uh, you have Amani Hooker starting at the free safety. Quandre, uh, Quandre Diggs at the... At the, the or Amani, it doesn't really matter. Amani Hooker, free safety. Amani uh, Quandre Diggs, strong safety. Um, to be honest, Quandre Diggs to me is more like a, a free safety in my opinion, anyway. And so is Amani Hooker. 
Um, I remember when, when the Titans had Amani Hooker and Kevin Byard both back there. They both are free safeties naturally, but someone has to be a strong safety on the depth chart, right? So it's kind of funny, but it is what it is. They both start. Amani Hooker's backup will be Elijah Molden, uh, and Quandre Diggs' backup will be Jamal Adams, but Jamal Adams will play a lot. He will play a lot. Um, <clears throat> our nickelback, the starting nickel for the tight, the Titans is Roger McCreary and his backup is Eric Garr. I love that. I love that. Uh, we have our kicker, Nick Folk, uh, punter, Ryan Stonehouse, Mason Kinsey. Again, like I mentioned, uh, previously earlier, Mason Kinsey is starting punt returner with Kiaris Jackson as the backup and Kyle Phillips behind him. Kyle Phillips just can't catch the football. I don't know what it is as a receiver. Sure. As a punt returner, he can't catch it. I don't know why he just can't do it. Um, so punt returner, Mason Kinsey, Kiaris Jackson, and I think, I think Jaquan Jackson deserves to be involved. Um, and then kickoff return, they have Ty J Spears, Kiaris Jackson, and Jaquan Jackson. I think it needs to just be Ty J Spears and J Kiaris Jackson. Uh, but Jaquan Jackson has a really good top end speed. Kiaris Jackson doesn't really have good top end speed, but he's just very shifty, quick on his feet, makes guys miss, got great balance and is strong. So it's very interesting, and then a great long snapper, Morgan Cox. So I would love to know what you guys think about the depth chart. I'm excited, man. I really am. I think this Titans team is going to have a great season. I think this Titans team is ready to go. I don't think we have many holes. And once this team gets together and um, and, and it starts gelling and, and, and is, is uh, you know, we start uh, stacking up some of these wins, then people are really going to start remembering the Titans. So uh, I appreciate everybody for coming in here tonight. I really am. Uh, again, we're going to start going live all the time. Make sure you follow us on YouTube as well, Titan Anderson. Um, I'm excited, man. I really am. And as a Titans content creator, a Titans fan, Texans, you better be worried. Don't think that this is going to be just given to you. It's not just going to be given to you. Blues Power, thank you for the donations, buddy. Tighten up code blue, Cyclops swag. You cannot spell Titans without putting that T-A in it. I'm Titan Anderson. Let's go. Wah!